Katie, thank you so much for getting involved with this project. Um, first of all, could you kind of give us uh, your name and uh, your role, please? Uh, hi, my name is Katie Pollington. I'm working as a year in industry student at Collins Aerospace this year. So I've taken a year out of my university degree to work as an engineer uh, in this company. Fantastic. And so what kind of activities are involved in your in your job? Uh, I'm working with one of the engineering teams building one of the new gyroscopes that we're launching, uh, doing a bit of everything, getting to work with the mechanical team, the electronics team, uh, the software and the testing side of it, getting to do a bit of everything. Wow, that sounds like a pretty complicated thing to do. So how did you kind of get into this role in the first place? Uh, I found the job online. The University uh, of Plymouth is really, really pushes for people to go and get placements. It's a really great opportunity to get experience while you're still at university. And I, I got my job through a charity called EDT, the Engineering Development Trust. Uh, they're really great. They have loads of opportunities for kids of all ages to get involved in engineering. And they've been really supportive and helped me uh, they helped me get the interview. And then they've helped me throughout my, my job. Okay. okay. So, okay, let's cast your mind back to school days. Okay. So what kind of subjects and qualifications did you study at school? Um, at GCSE, I studied the subjects that I enjoyed because I think that's the best way to do it. I, I, I studied all the normal ones, triple science, uh, French, geography, PE, and uh, DT electronics. Um, my favorite subject was electronics. You know, I spent so much time outside of like school hours in the lab building things. So fun. Um, it really got me interested in engineering and electronics. And at A level, because I knew I wanted to go into engineering, I took maths, physics, and chemistry because it's a really good starting point for engineering. You know, get all the basics you need. And, um, and now I study robotic engineering at the University of Plymouth. Wow. Oh, dear. So uh, you're already into kind of soldering irons and various other things before you even left school. That's amazing. Um, so what kind of training do you get where you are now to help you develop your uh, skill sets and your career? Um, there's a load of formal training at the beginning of the, uh, the beginning of the, the job placement at the beginning of the year for uh, like general company stuff and all the health and safety things we need. And then I'm all my technical training for my job is on the job training. I'm learning every day. I'm basically doing a year long work experience that I get paid for. Uh, and everyone is super helpful and answers all of my questions, even when they're really stupid. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, that's the only way to learn sometimes. There's only exactly. the way to learn. If you don't ask, you don't get. So, so, I mean, so what kind of personal qualities have kind of helped you be so successful? Um, I'm pretty determined and motivated. Lots of engineering is about problem solving and finding new and creative ways to solve problems and get around things that are wrong. <laughs> um, uh, and having the motivation to keep going and find the new ways around it and talk to different people and do the research is one of the key things about getting problems solved and doing engineering. Okay. And so with every job, with every role, there are kind of what we call the challenges and the rewards. So what have been the challenges that you had to face to get to, to get where you are now? Um, I think getting, getting a placement is pretty hard. They're fairly competitive. There are, there are a lot of students in engineering and there are a lot of placements, but, you know, not enough, apparently. Uh, yeah, not everyone gets a placement, so I'm very lucky to have one. Uh, and then on this year, because of COVID, I've been working at home and that's been really tough. I found that really hard because I haven't seen the thing that we're building. So I've been like trying to work with the mechanical team, putting in some new plugs into the, into the gyroscope, which is only like this big. Mm -hmm. And it's... It's really hard to visualize it when I've not ever actually seen it or held it. And it's really also really hard to make the social connections because I've I didn't meet my boss in person until like last week or something. And I've been working there for nine months. Um, and it's really tough to get the to get the help I need when I have to wait for emails to come back. Uh, yeah. OK, so so the communication and the building of a team is actually uh, pretty difficult. Mm. So. You, nobody goes into this for a set of challenges. So what were the rewards that you kind of feel you're getting out of this? Um, I get an immense amount of job satisfaction from like solving problems and getting to the getting to the end of projects and knowing that you've put loads of effort in and seeing the reward for it. It's just the seeing the thing that you've built. 
be able to look at the things, the gyroscope that we built and knowing that they're going to go into helicopters or submarines or satellites is really awesome. And working as part of a really good, really big team, we're actually launching uh, the gyroscope we've been working on that they've been working on for a couple of years and I've been working on since I started really soon and everyone's really excited and that's a really nice feeling to be like part of that team. So that's that kind of buzz. Yeah. Getting to the end of the project. That's amazing. So what kind of advice would you give to, to a young person who is thinking of kind of following you down this line? Uh, do it. It's really awesome. <laughs> um, just like go online. There's loads and loads of stuff to help you get started in electronics uh, and then just build some stuff. Basically, keep a book of some wacky ideas you have if you want to. Um, find a different way to get people into space or you want to build uh, grow trees upside down or whatever it is that you want to do electronics and engineering is only um, the only limits of your imagination and physics when we get there but you know we will get there <laughs> um, yeah start small look at some small projects online or with things in your house or buy a small starter kit and just build some stuff it's a lot easier than you think it will be okay so You've been doing this job now for a while. Um, what would you say still gets you out of bed in the morning? You know, what kind of makes you want to go into work and really nail it? Um, I I love solving problems. It's probably fairly obvious. I the being able to go into work every day and work with such uh, with such brilliant and amazing people on complicated problems that are important problems and gonna solve and gonna be part of something bigger than just me is really cool. Also, I do a load of different things. Every day I get uh, different jobs to do and I really love that. It's it's great to be able to one day go in and spend all day coding and doing software stuff and go in another day and spend all day in the lab building, um, testing things or um, changing around uh, the the components to make it, make it work better and, and testing those values. And yeah, working with such great people is awesome. Thanks. Okay, you say that you really landed on your feet with this role. It's just amazing. Right. Well, all I can say is, Katie, thank you so much for being, being part of this. And um, and I'm sure your story is going to inspire a few people to follow you all the way through to uh, some kind of career in aerospace and electronic engineering. Thanks ever so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.